Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Pole Barn Project. And I am up here on the roof and by some miracle we've had a really nice run of dry weather. And so I've been coming out here every night after work um, and spending three or four hours on the project to try and get the roof on or most of the roof on uh, before we get rain in a few more days. And so, uh, so last time I think we left it off with rafters and purlins and then some fascia trim. And uh, really the next step after that was me putting up the OSB sheathing. This is 7 16th OSB. Um, I've got nine foot panels on the outside, eight foot panels in the middle. Because the original uh, timber frame carport had a metal roof and it had roof purlins running uh, down this length, uh, I mimicked that same framing with this new roof that let me have the same uh, rafter tails and, and <clears throat> gable details without having to take all the purlins and everything off of the existing roof. So I kind of carried that forward to this um, new construction. And, you know, normally when you're putting OSB sheathing on a roof, you've just got rafters running this way and you put the sheathing down. Well, you can actually put it down over purlins and there are uh, technical bulletins how you need to do that. It's really not much different. Um, uh, just just realize that your your long runs are this way um, uh, otherwise though it's pretty much the same one of the interesting things about doing it that way though is you know normally when I put up sheathing on a roof with rafters I stagger the panels and I stagger my joints um, I was getting ready to do that for this project and I was like well wait a minute I've got long continuous purlins uh, there's really no need to stagger in this direction if I was going to stagger, I would stagger in this direction, but that's not really necessary either because of the framing grid uh, structure of this, uh, this, this, this roof system. Uh, you know, the way we do for metal roofs kind of makes it overkill for a uh, OSB sheathing roof. And so uh, I was able to just throw up these, uh, these panels pretty much in rows, nine footers here, eight footers here, and then nine footers over there to cover the 26 foot length of this roof. And so that went up really quickly. I didn't have to stop and take time to make cuts and um, stagger the panels. Really just uh, the effort was getting them up here. I used the tractor to fork them up and then nail them down with an air nailer. And then I like to go back around afterwards, uh, put screws in on some of the corners uh, just to make sure they're down snug. And so the sheathing is up. Uh, this detail here, I don't think a lot of people know about this. This is a pitch transition fairing. And notice I use the word fairing, not flashing. It happens to be using valley flashing uh, galvanized metal, but this isn't a flashing in the sense that it's not meant to keep out water. Um, what this does is, you know, I've got a 712 pitch that meets up with a 2512 pitch. And where they meet up at that joint, you have pretty much a, a, a valley. And, uh, you know, over time, what you'll often find is that the, the roofing shingles, if you shingle over that valley at that pitch transition, they will sag down into that, uh, that point right there. And that ends up leaving you with a little bit of a, um, I don't want to say a low spot, but it really what it does, if water's running down the roof at a 712 pitch, it, it hits this lower 2.5-12 pitch and it first it runs into that low spot. And that can actually make the water back up a little bit. It can make it pool there. Um, in the winter, you can get ice dams in this location. And so this pitch transition fairing, all it really does is provide a nice rounded uh, shape transition between the upper pitch and the lower pitch so that when I lay the shingles down over this, they're going to have a nice curve and they won't ever sag down into that valley or that V uh, where the two pitches meet. So. This is kind of a nuanced detail. Not a lot of people know to do this. Um, in fact, I, I'm thinking about my main house when the roofers uh, put that roof on. It's got a lot of pitch transitions. I don't think they did this at all. So it's not commonly done, but um, if you're going from a high pitch to a low pitch, this is a good thing. There's really no downside to doing this. Um, and again, this is just uh, valley flashing galvanized steel. Um, what I normally do is lay it down, nail it along the bottom, and then use a board to push down and kind of force it down into that V as I nail the top. And that just fares in that uh, angle transition and, and 
really is going to prove the performance of the shingles and the water flow in that area. So this by itself um, has nothing to do with preventing leaks, but what this is going to do is, is allow the shingles to perform better so that they don't leak. All right. And so it's a good thing to do. Um, keep that in mind if you're ever doing a roof with a high pitch to low pitch uh, transition. So what I'm working on now is putting down um, underlayment on this lower pitch section. And I've got some of it here. Uh, this is GAF um, Weather Watch Peel and Stick Underlayment. Um, and this is a really good first layer to put on your roof um, to protect against any sort of leaks or water intrusion. You know, it's down below your shingles, so when you put your shingles on, you're going to put a million nails through this, but this, this has a self-sealing property. Uh, when a nail goes through, it basically seals around that nail. And so this is a very effective uh, uh, membrane or barrier to put down as your first step on a roof. I only ever use this on low-pitch roofs. Um, and I use it in a couple scenarios. Uh, if it's, um, if it's uh, like a, a structure that's going to be heated in the winter um, and you have to worry about... Uh, ice dam scenarios for sure you want to have this on the lower uh, about two feet in from your wall all the way down to the eaves so that'll be three or four feet depending on how much overhang you have this is really good um, insurance against ice dam problems and so it's always good to have that at the bottom part of the the roof um, but in this case you know this is a two and a half over 12 this is a really low pitch uh, this is about as low as you can go with an asphalt roof and um, I was getting ready to just do the first four feet, and I'm like, you know what, this stuff's only 80 bucks a roll. Um, it's cheap insurance, so I'm going to carry this up, uh, basically all the way up over this uh, transition fairing and stop uh, somewhere in here. Um, and then for the uh, upper pitch, uh, we will only have uh, roofing felt, uh, which also goes over the top of this just to really to protect this. So we'll have. Uh, the barrier on the low, low pitch section and then roofing felt comes up uh, over the entire section of the roof. When I get to do uh, working on the other side of uh, the, the, the roof, uh, which still has metal on it right now, um, when I finish that off, I will put a, a, roll of, uh, a row of this at the very bottom of that, um, just because that's an outside wall, an outside eave. I do plan to heat this building in the future. So there could be ice dam situations there. So th this will go on that, that other side, just at the very bottom. But because that's 712, there's really no need to run this all the way up. So um, what I want to do now is uh, just show you how this goes down. It's super easy. Uh, I keep thinking to myself, I wish the permanent outer layer of the roof was this easy. I mean, can you imagine if you just, you know, did peel and stick and unroll your roof and you were done I mean that would be great I'm surprised uh, there isn't a, a product like that but I wanted to do a video on how this goes down the instructions for this um, I think they dumb it down to help people avoid mistakes um, they tell you to work in 10 foot sections which I don't like that because you have a ton of end laps and every time you do an end lap you have to overlap six inches so you waste a lot of material if you're working in 10 foot sections what I've been doing is doing the full 26 foot um, row. Um, and my trick for doing this is I lay out uh, the membrane, I cut it the size, I lay it out, I position it where it needs to be. And then I put one nail at the top of the membrane where it's gonna be overlapped by the next course, uh, just to hold it in place. And that lets me go to each end and uh, just adjust it and fine tune it, get it ready. And uh, then I, uh, basically roll back uh, one end of this and reach under and pull out the release uh, paper and pull that from underneath and uh, it works great I mean it lets me do a full 26 section uh, nice and straight it's not crooked no air bubbles no wrinkles no anything and so um, I'm gonna rearrange the camera now and we'll put down this uh, next course so you can see how it's done
All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, that's how I do a, a row of this stuff. Um, I don't want to break it into small pieces. I, I, I feel like I can do a full full run if you take some care to position it. Pin it with a nail in the middle as a reference, and then you know keep adjusting. You saw I probably adjusted this four or five times before I started peeling any adhesive or uh, committing to anything. Um, but yeah, pin it, stretch it on to both ends, and then start peeling carefully, pulling of the backing uh, paper from underneath. Um, don't ever roll this stuff over or flop it over. Uh, just leave it laying flat. It's it's a it's a interesting material. It's 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 strong and uh, it's got some stiffness to it, but it's also got a little bit of a limpness to it. So it will lay flat very readily. Um, and today is about 80 degrees. I imagine in cold weather it could be more stubborn, but uh, this is a good temperature. I would not want to be doing this uh, if it was really hot, but uh, 80 degrees, this stuff works really nicely. And um, super easy to put down. I got a nice straight row, no bubbles. Um, one thing they do recommend is coming back with a roller, a weighted roller and rolling this down. I, don't, I was thinking about, I don't even own a roller weighted or unweighted, uh, but I do have a couple rolls of roofing felt that are pretty heavy. And so probably what I'll do is uh, when I bring the felt up to put it down, um, I'll just roll it back and forth a few times just to uh, increase the contact of, of this adhesive. But I think that's going to do it for today. So I'm going to finish on up uh, just past that uh, pitch transition fairing and uh, call it a day. Thanks for watching.